you must connect with the crystal and ask it, converse with the crystal. They will always be honest. There are no liars among crystals. <laughs> it's very, that's in alignment with uh, a lot of the, the way that I speak about crystals when people, I always try to encourage people to just choose them in the way that Kim was mentioning, being drawn to them. And for the raw crystals or even the tumbled ones, you have to consider that somewhere in the cosmos, both of you connected and it formed and shaped in a way that was pleasing to you so that you could connect in that moment. And maybe it wasn't just you, you end up passing it along, but um, there is a beautiful pre-connection that's made. I do want to include our audience if that's okay. Um, so Deb Mueller asked about angel aura crystals. Do you have experience with those, Kim? I do, but I don't want to. No, I don't. I've, I've seen them. They're pretty, but I've never used them in any capacity. So those are in on the topic of man-made crystals. They are man-made. Um, they are usually taking an amethyst or a regular quartz and they're blasting it. They're superheating it and they're blasting it with some sort of metal. Now, um, depending on the metal, it's never... It's never anything that is a combination metal. So you won't see like bronze blasted onto anything, but you will see copper, see silver, titanium, platinum, some of those to create different rainbow colors, mostly titanium. Um, and it elevates the frequency of the stone. Now, again, mankind is involved in the process and, and through maybe what the librarians have guided us to, there's an opportunity to work with healing in terms of that might have been created out of greed, <laughs> but... Um, it is a powerful piece to work with. The titanium variety in particular helps to work with all the chakras at once. And gold is the highest frequency. So um, there's a lot of opportunity for healing with that, uh, but it is a hole in your wallet for sure. Because <laughs> as soon as they <laughs> add metal to a crystal, it changes the vibration and also the price. So just wanted to give that. Um, and that out. <laughs> it seems that, sorry, I keep looking down, guys. Um, Nazi is asking, how have the seeded crystals planted into our planet affected the evolution of humanity or genetically altered our DNA? Nazi with mm. the home run questions. An excellent question from the curious one. <laughs> we are pleased with this. Of course, we had hoped it would have had a greater effect of the evolution of humanity, for there is much knowledge and connection in within the seeded crystals. It has not had any impact upon your genetic evolution. Hmm. It has had some impact upon the emotional and spiritual the intellectual evolution upon the energetic connection, you will notice locations that are heavily seated are locations where there are many divine sacred wisdoms. Wow. Are some of the seated locations, the heavier seated locations also near or on the energetic ley lines? So there <laughs> our friend sorry <laughs> there's not just the ley lines to be concerned about there's also the root the the earth has its own set of chakras and so you're dealing with those as well um and uh so yes to your question but there's more to it um and then there are some energetic hot spots where crystals have been brought and um used like egypt is one mm -hmm. and now um, you won't find crystals there because they've just been like way overdug, way overdone. It's over radiated. So there's a lot to where they show up, but the librarians probably have more to that. <laughs> we remind you that this seeding took place long ago. Your planet is in constant reshaping. It is a living planet. The chakras you have now are not the chakras of long ago. Everything has shifted. If you wish to map the chakras of your planet 
from a billion years ago or more, look to the heavily seated areas and see if you can use your imagination to follow the path from where it is now to from whence it came. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I think we're getting some technical questions, but maybe the li- maybe the librarians are aware. Um, are you all familiar with? Of course, you are because you're ancient. But <laughs> can you tell us about? crystals and um, crystals like selenite or um, blue kyanite, those more fibrous Mm -hmm. crystals that don't need clearing. I have my own theories on that, but I wondered if there's anything in the records. If not, uh, then I can just take over. We will speak briefly on this. Of course, crystals do not ever actually need clearing, it is the human energy stuck in their atmosphere that requires the clearing. Those who are very pure will find that the crystals need never be cleared for the energy is ever flowing. There are no hmm stops put to them and no pollution put upon them. It is your access to the crystal. The unidirectional crystals have so much flow that what are you going to clear? For you may put debris around the sides but you can never cease the blasting energy. Interesting. That's, that's a little bit where I was headed. The more fibrous, um, the structure of the crystals with the fibers in between them, it's easier for the energy to get out. Um, and those crystals are pretty high, pretty high frequency. Um, and selenite is extremely, I mean, you put it in water and it melts. So mm-hmm. it's very flexible for lack of better phrasing. And so it's not going to hold on to, it's like your best friend that isn't moved by anything. (laughs) And again, you change the environment, the crystal does not cease to exist. It changes form. Its power is ever present. Mm 